Okay. Show me. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dutch Sea Channel for something not completely RC related. What I have here is a handheld gimbal, as you can see. Camera is not included. And um, yeah, RC related or not, uh, maybe you uh, drive RC cars that you uh, sometimes want to shoot a video of. Maybe you want to take up vlogging. So you uh, can uh, shoot uh, videos of yourself of uh, reasonable quality, such as uh, this. <laughs> uh, like, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't let me tell you that this is a high quality video, but uh, again, uh, a handheld gimbal like this, you can utilize for vlogging and have a smooth, a stable video. So, um, yes, this gimbal here, it's from Banggood. And it's a far less expensive gimbal than, for instance, the Fiotex or the DJI uh, gimbals. And um, yeah, is it any good? Uh, does that uh, lower price automatically translate into a crappy gimbal? Right? That's the question. I can already tell you that it's not a crappy gimbal at all. Um, does it have downsides? Yes, and I'll uh, show those to you in this video, obviously. I'll also show you what, uh, what's good about uh, this uh, gimbal. And um, yeah, I uh, picked, it, uh, picked this one up uh, from Banggood again to see if at this price you can get a decent handheld gimbal. Okay, let's first step into the studio and then uh, I'll show you what comes with this gimbal. After that I'll show you its uh, functions, its modes, so to speak. And then we'll do some uh, additional tests to see the, the upsides and the downsides of this uh, free access gimbal. Okay, let's get to the studio. Okay, first of all the box. AFI is uh, apparently the manufacturer, never heard of that company, but uh, who really cares if the gimbal works out good enough. And I'm not gonna waste your time uh, doing an unboxing, but it's good to show you that the gimbal comes well packaged in a big block of foam. So, that's very nice. Now let's see what comes with this gimbal. Okay, the gimbal comes with two manuals, one uh, all in Chinese and one in English. And the translation is pretty typical, I'm sorry to say. It's uh, Chinglish, so to speak. The manual does show you uh, how to operate uh, the gimbal. Um, I have not found any information on the USB port. I'll show you that USB port in a second. And there are some uh, mounting holes on the gimbal and it doesn't really tell you how to use those either. Um, neither does the manual tell you how to calibrate the gimbal. I haven't really found that to be uh, needed. Uh, I have not uh, done any calibration at all and the gimbal stabilizes your video well. But again, uh, I think it would have been nice to have a calibration uh, procedure in the manual. Okay, here is everything to charge and power the gimbal. A uh, charger for these kinds of uh, D-cells, I think, batteries, lithium-ion batteries. The gimbal comes with four of these. So that's pretty nice, two spare ones or uh, two to charge up while you're using the gimbal. A USB power block with a US uh, adapter. And we get a European conversion adapter for that. And as you can see the charger itself comes with a USB cord. A nice uh, thin cord. That's very nice. And here is our gimbal again. Yes sir. And uh, what this basically is, is a three-way gimbal up on top over here. Again, it does not come with an action camera. It fits a GoPro 3 and 4 style of cameras or a camera with the same dimensions. I have an SJ Cam S7 Star in this gimbal at the moment. 
Okay, and uh, let's see, yeah, uh, apart from that, uh, there's a handle with two knobs over here, buttons, knobs, and uh, in the handle you will uh, insert the two D-cells. And uh, so that's pretty uh, basic, obviously. Um, there's one on-off button over here, the black one, and there is a mode selector, this white button. And it'll uh, show what mode it's in with uh, different color combinations. Uh, the different color combinations are in the manual. And um, in full daylight they are a bit hard to see. But in uh, practical use I think you can imagine that uh, one or two of the modes will be your favorite. So you will just cycle on through to the mode you want to use and just leave the gimbal in that mode. So that works out pretty well. Now uh, in this uh, video I'll uh, obviously show you those uh, modes. There are four, four and a half, maybe five modes. And uh, in a minute I'll show you uh, the differences, so what uh, the, the four modes are. Five modes, four modes. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll also um, have you listen to a recording without narration and without any surround noise or sounds. Um, this gimbal uh, does make a little bit of noise and you'll hear that in the video. So that is uh, definitely a downside of this gimbal and uh, yeah, apparently the price you pay for uh, getting a lower cost gimbal. Uh, again, I'll uh, have you listen to uh, what uh, sound the gimbal or the motors of the gimbal produce. And um, you'll have to see for yourself if that's a problem for you or uh, if it's not. Let's first uh, go out again and then I'll... Uh, show you the, the modes, the operational modes of this gimbal. After that we'll get uh, back to the studio and then I'll uh, try and let you hear uh, the sound this uh, gimbal makes. And after that we'll do some more testing, uh, real life testing with the gimbal. Okay, let me uh, give you a uh, brief rundown of the functions or the modes of this handheld gimbal here. Um, it basically has four modes, but the first two modes are very similar, which is okay. But uh, anyway, the first two modes, uh, it will pan with your hand like this. It will follow the direction of your hand, like so. And it will dampen or actually completely uh, negate all uh, yaw movement, like this. It will keep the camera horizontally stable, but if you tilt the gimbal forwards, it'll tilt the camera forwards as well. And if you tilt it upwards, it'll tilt the camera upwards just the same. Okay, now uh, let's switch to the second mode by pressing this uh, illuminated uh, button over here. Click. Okay, so again, the second mode is more or less the same. As you can see, it uh, follows the panning of my hand, like this. It also moves the camera down or tilts the camera down if I tilt the gimbal down, just, in the f just as in the first mode. And it'll keep the camera level like so okay so the first two modes are mostly the same maybe one of the two is a little faster or less smooth I haven't been able to determine what is what really they are mostly the same this the, the third mode is significantly different though if I press the button again so now it's in its third mode and it will no longer pan with my hand. As you can see, it'll keep a constant heading, more or less. Not perfectly, by the way. It has a little bit of drift. Yeah. Okay, and if I tilt the gimbal down, as you can see, it'll keep the camera horizontal as well. So it won't pitch the camera 
down so you'd uh, be looking at the ground anymore. And this, the yaw movement is still stabilized. Okay. Is that all the modes? Let's see. No, um, this is uh, kind of the fourth mode I'm in now. It'll now pan with my hand. As you can see, it uh, won't keep a constant heading. See? It'll move with my hand. However, it'll keep the lens tilted horizontally as well. Okay, and this mode has another trick up its sleeve. If I tilt the camera with my hand and keep it there for two seconds, like so, now it uh, keeps that angle, which is, uh, this, this is a really a useful feature, I think. Very handy. I like this feature a lot. Okay, and uh, the same goes for downwards. If I move it on down, hold it for two seconds, now it's pointing downwards a little. Okay, and there's really also a fifth mode. Uh, you can use the gimbal upside down as well, like so. Uh, let's uh, level it out. There you go. So, um, yeah, this mode should be uh, handy if you want to shoot a video of your car low to the ground. And, um, yeah, you tell me, this uh, works out uh, pretty well, I think. Okie dokie, we're back in the studio. Um, Actually, tell me what you think. So far, I've been testing this gimbal for a couple of weeks, and I think in the sense of uh, stabilizing, uh, it performs very well. Uh, but again, you tell me what you think. Um, next thing we'll do is we'll see uh, what that sound uh, is like, the sound this gimbal makes. So I'm just gonna show you an other clip I uh, shot at uh, night. So uh, there was no uh, surrounding sounds and uh, then we'll get uh, back and I'll tell you what I think of that, that sound.
Okay, so I think it's uh, pretty apparent that uh, this gimbal makes noise that you can actually hear in a recorded video. Yeah. Um, what shall we say about that? Um, I think you could uh, use this gimbal for, uh, for instance, uh, recording your your cars, your RC cars, if you edit in music into your videos. And uh, well, in most cases, actually, I do. Uh, for instance, in my scalar videos, I always add uh, music into the video, and I never really use the recorded audio. So for those kinds of videos. Uh, the gimbal works out uh, well. Uh, again, it does its stabilizing job well. However, that noise, yeah, you basically can't use this gimbal for uh, vlogging. So, if you are looking for a nice handheld gimbal for vlogging or any other kind of video in which you want to use the recorded sound, this is not the gimbal for you. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what to say. Does it make it a, a crappy gimbal? No, not uh, not really. Again, if you don't use the sound recorded uh, by the camera that's uh, mounted on the gimbal, it's not a problem in all other circumstances. It is. Okay, so um, on with the rest of the review. Uh, there are a few things I haven't pointed out yet. Uh, there's a mount over here which uh, looks to be a tripod mount, uh, but it's yeah on the side of the gimbal. I suspect uh, they uh, intend you to use this for a uh, phone mount, for a viewfinder for your camera. I haven't been able to find a phone mount suitable for this gimbal though, but I think that's the intention of this here mount. At the bottom of the gimbal there's also such a mount and that is uh, meant to uh, uh, mount the gimbal onto a tripod. I'm not really sure what the use of that would be. You could simply mount your camera on uh, the tripod, right? So, And this screw hole you can use to uh, add extensions to the pole. Uh, if you want to use a longer handle you can uh, use this screw hole for that. So that is very handy, I think. And uh, the handle also has this USB port over here, and I have no idea what that's for. I haven't been able to uh, find any information on that. Um, firmware updates? Maybe I haven't found uh, firmware updates or any uh, info on that uh, on the uh, manufacturer's site at all. So again, I have no idea what this USB connector is for. Okay, um, let's see what more can we do. Yeah, I'll uh, take this uh, gimbal out for a spin on my bicycle and uh, we'll see what uh, stabilized uh, real life footage from this gimbal looks like. And that'll uh, uh, conclude my review, I think, for this gimbal again. If you want to use uh, this gimbal for vlogging or any other kind of video in which you want to use the recorded sound, this uh, gimbal is uh, useless to you. If you intend to uh, add music to your videos anyway, uh, then this is a quite a good gimbal. I think the resulting video is uh, very, very stable. So, here we go for some uh, real life uh, action, so to speak. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video uh, helped you out. And see you in the next video. Bye bye.